Hi, I'm Matt Rita. I'm the International ARF Product Manager at E1. I've been involved in the new business and distribution development for this type of product for over the last 25 years. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Titan Series cab. I'd like to introduce Raf McDougall, who's our Director of Engineering here at E1. But also I'd like to say that Raf has been the program manager for this product since its inception over two years ago. Hi everyone, the Emergency One New Titan product has been a two-year two project that was begun in late 2015 and culminated with our launch in early 2018. Um, this is a completely new design from the ground up. Nothing was carried over from the previous designs. So every aspect of the truck was touched in this design project. From the chassis, engine selection, transmission selection, even electrical architecture was touched. And obviously with that comes a new cab. With any new cab development, there is obviously a lot of aspects that have to be paid attention to. The first, of course, that comes to mind is styling, then ergonomics, and lastly, but certainly not leastly, is the safety of the occupants in the cab. As far as the safety aspect is concerned with regard to the cabs, NFPA has done a really good job of including some crashworthiness requirements in the NFPA 414 regulations. These include requirements with regard to SAE tests 2420 and 2422 and also the ECE which is the international requirement ECE R29. With regard to these test requirements the re basic requirements of all these tests are that there is no encroachment of damage after a crash into the survival space of the occupants and also all doors must remain closed after the uh, accident and finally, the cab needs to remain attached to the chassis. All this is done in an attempt to protect the occupants in the event of a, the unfortunate occurrence of an accident. So in order to comply with the crashworthiness requirements of the NFPA 414, we first start off by doing a lot of analysis to make sure that our design has a very good chance of passing the testing. Once that is done and the cab is built, we then send the cab to an outside company IMMI, or also known as the CAPE, and they do the actual testing on a cab. So what we're going to see now is some video footage of the crash testing that was done at IMMI. In the first series of videos, what you're looking at is the SAE 2422 crash testing. This is the roof load testing, and it comprises of two parts. It is a 20 degree hit from the side of the cab, followed by a roof crush test. So in this first series of videos, what you're looking at is the 20 degree hit test. What you'll notice in some of these videos is that none of the extrusions that are the uh, roll cage in effect for the cab are affected by the crash test. And only some deflection of the metal is what you'll see in the videos. During this test, a sled is used to impact the cab at a 20 degree angle from the side using a 13,000 pound force energy input. What this simulates is the cab rolling over in the event of an accident. As part of the crash testing, it's very important to be able to see what is going on during the test. And to this end, super slow motion cameras are used to capture the footage of the crash testing. So what you'll see in the following videos is mostly the super slow-mo and then also some real-time footage. The second part of SAE 2422 crash testing is the roof load crush test. In this test, we are required to crush the cab from the roof with a load equal to the front axle GVW, which in this case would have been 31,000 pounds. We decided to go above and beyond that and test it to twice the front axle GVW making it 62,000 pounds. And in fact, once you watch the footage, you'll see we actually ran the test at 63,500 pounds crush load. The way this works is, as you'll see in the video, the cab is on a base, and then there are, is a top plate that the cylinders pull down to the loading. We have to hold the loading for 10 seconds, and the survival space and the doors need to stay closed. So the other part of the crash testing that we have to pay attention to is frontal impacts because obviously not all cabs roll over in a crash. 
Most accidents, in fact, are frontal impacts. And to this end, NFPA 414 specifies you can either comply with ECE R29, which is the European standard, or you can do SAE 2420. The difference between those two tests is purely in the loading of the impact. So because ECE R29 has a higher loading, we decided to make sure that our cab could comply with that test. And so we tested it at the higher 40,500 foot-pounds of force loading into the front of the cab. So what you'll see in the following videos is the sled impacting the front of the cab which is bolted to an immovable plate. As you can see in the videos, the damage is very minimal. In fact, if you look closely, the only thing that really cracked was the front windshield. Even the side glass did not crack. What that tells us is that the framework, the extrusion framework of the cab is doing its function and that is protecting the occupants. The test was conducted at an equivalent of a 15 mile an hour crash into an immovable object. So that is actually far worse than a 15 mile an hour crash between two vehicles because in this case the cab has no way to move to. It is held rigid. On behalf of E1 I'd like to thank you for watching episode 2 of the Titan Arf series and stay tuned for more to come.